Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I'm super excited today because I get to talk to you about a task manager. I love task managers. I'm really passionate about them. I'm really picky about how they work. And if you watch this channel at all, you know I'm a big fan of the app Things from Cultured Code. I think it's a really beautiful app. I think it has a lot of things going for it. I really, really like how it kind of builds into my workflow and works really nicely with me. And I'm just used to it. So it just kind of works because I'm used to how it works. Recently, I kind of got the itch to just look around and see what else is out there, see what's changed since last I looked, because I've been using things nonstop for the past two years or so, and I've used Todoist in the past, I've used OmniFocus, I've used a whole bunch of other apps, I basically bought them all at one point or another, and I wanted to check out Todoist because I think they've made a lot of good changes over the years and I wanted to see if they were really impactful. So today I'm going to go over the 10 things that I think are really cool about Todoist and why I'm currently using Todoist for all my task management. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it, I'll probably end up going back to Things, and if Things 4 ever comes out, I'm sure that'll draw me back in, but yeah, let's look through 10 things I think are really cool about Todoist. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to get into everything in this video, but I've got my Todoist pulled up here, and it's slightly modified to protect the privacy of stuff that I'm actually doing at work, but uh, yeah, I've got some tasks in here, I've got some projects over here on the side, uh, I've got labels and filters, which I haven't really dove into, but the first thing that I have to mention about Todoist that I really love compared to things is task entry. Task entry is so much faster. Uh, Todoist really, I think, push this further than everyone else. So if I want to do a new task, I'm just gonna hit control space bar, which is the shortcut I have set up to be anywhere in the system. I can bring up this little pop-up. I'm gonna say, do the thing. And then I'll say uh, tomorrow, 8 a.m. and then work, right? And so now I have a task that's called do the thing is gonna be due tomorrow at 8 a.m. and it's gonna be in my project work. And I can just hit enter and it's created and it's gonna be in my calendar for tomorrow. And that's great. Super, super simple. Um, additionally, it goes further than that. So like if I wanna do a recurring thing, so like let's say every Friday I want to record a video for this channel, I can do that same thing, uh, record a video, and I'll do every Friday 9 a.m. and then it's gonna be in a better computer, right? Record video every Friday 9 a.m. and you can kinda of see it's in the project, uh, it's set to go today because today at 9 a.m. is still in the future. Um, and then it's going to repeat every Friday from then on. I can just add the task and it'll save and repeat. So that's all really, really cool. Um, love, love, love how this works. It works great. It works fast. It works on the iPhone, iPad, Android, web. Like it works everywhere. All this natural language works everywhere and it's fantastic. Things, if I pull up things real quick, um, you can kind of see how that compares. So if I pull up the new task thing in things, I could say uh, record a video, right? Um, and then I have to tab down to the date. Then I can say uh, Friday at 9 a.m., right? So now it's due today at 9 a.m. But if I wanna make it recurring, and if I wanna add it to a project, I'd have to do this, we'll add it to a better computer. And then I have to go down here and hit repeat. And then I get this really like powerful kind of logic for how I want it to happen, but I could say like weekly, every uh, Friday, every one week on Friday, and the next one is today, uh, and it ends whenever, right? And I have a reminder for 9 a.m., so there we go. So now I have uh, to do to record a video, but that took longer for me to write out. And maybe that's fine for you, maybe that works better for you, you like kind of the more the UI part of it, and I could do that all through the UI here, um, but in things, you don't really have a choice. Uh, so that's definitely a thing that's not quite as good about things, in my opinion. So that's one thing I really love it about Todoist. Todoist has always been good at this. Even when I moved away from them a couple years ago to things, I really missed that. So yeah, that's one thing about Todoist. Next up are recurring tasks. And I kind of showed you how you create them in Todoist, and it's really easy, works really great. But there's another thing about recurring tasks that is really annoying in things and works better in Todoist. So I have that idea of like make a video that's going to recur every week. I've got one set for tomorrow, so it's not in my today view, but it's in my upcoming. So I have record a video and I actually can't mark this as complete. So if I do this task today, there's no way for me to mark it as complete until tomorrow comes along and then I can mark it as complete because it'll be in my today view. That's really annoying. Not often an issue, but is definitely annoying when it comes up. 
Meanwhile, in Todoist, I've got the exact same thing set up. I can just go into, uh, I'll go into upcoming and I can see there's my stuff for today and then my stuff for tomorrow. I have do the thing, which is a one-off task. So I'll just go ahead and mark that as complete. And then I have record a video, which is due tomorrow, but I can mark it off today and it's done. So that's really nice. I don't understand why things won't let you do it. I'm sure there's some backend logic that makes this more complicated, but it would be really nice if they could fix that because it's good to do a task early and be able to mark it off and not do it and then have to remember to mark it off. That really goes against the whole part about using a task manager in the first place. So I really hope things can address that in the future. Another thing Todoist does better is that it has one app everywhere. So when you download Todoist, it's the same app on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and whatever other platforms you're using, the web, Windows, Android, it works everywhere. On Things, Things has separate apps on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and they all work the same, they all work together, but they're technically different apps, which means they're a little inconvenient to use in the Apple environment. And the reason, like a bigger thing that for me is that with shortcuts, I wanna create a shortcut that like does these certain things in Things, and I can't do that on all my devices. So Speaking of automation, a thing that really annoys me about things is that there is no web API for this. You can use Apple shortcuts, so it's a good iOS and like iPadOS citizen, but you can't do anything just from the web. You can't automate things in more advanced ways. And so what I kind of that example I just mentioned of I post a video to YouTube, I want to do a couple tasks after that. Right now I have to remember to run that shortcut because there's no way for me to just automatically have things add those tasks. With Todoist, I can actually make it so that Zapier will look at my YouTube channel. Whenever I post a video, it will automatically create these tasks in Todoist for me. And that's super, super helpful because it makes it a thing that I don't have to think about. As soon as a video posts, especially if it's one that I scheduled like a couple days or weeks ago even, and it posts to my YouTube channel, I can access it or I can get those tasks in my Todoist automatically without me having to think about it. And then I can just do the things. I don't have to remember to remind myself to do the things. I can just do the things. So that's really cool as well. Number five is the design. So the design of Todoist is not as good as Things. Things still wins there, I think. But I think Todoist has gotten a lot better. There's, It just looks pretty nice. It's not as over the top wonderful as Things. But I think if you look at this interface, it's pretty good. Like it's easy to read what's going on. Things are separated nicely. Um, the buttons are chunky and like look good and everything. And it's satisfying to click things. On the iPhone, you get haptic feedback when you knock things off and everything. Like it all works perfectly well. It's better than it used to be. I think it used to be more utilitarian. It's not as good as things, but it's good enough for me to kind of feel good about it. Additionally, um, there are themes. So you can see my Todoist is orange. If I go into the app preferences and go to theme, uh, there's a whole bunch of themes you can set. I think you get like these first five on the free plan and then all these with a star you can uh, do once you um, are on the premium plan. But yeah, I can change my theme. So now it's purple. We'll leave it as purple for the rest of the video. Uh, but it looks just how I want it to look, right? And that's really nice for me. It's a thing that I enjoy. Um, you can change the colors that show here for projects. Um, you can do custom sorting on each view. So my today view, I've kind of simulated what things does. Um, I also like that on this view, I have it organized by project. So my work stuff is here. My secret thing is here. My uh, better computer stuff is here. Kind of like things would separate it by project but they're also sorted by when they're due. So my 2 p.m. one is in front of my 3 p.m. one, whereas things just kind of has them seemingly randomly spread out and you don't know which ones do when. So I like that it kind of sorts it like this and I can adjust it if I want. There's tons of sorting options here where I can make it exactly what I want it to look like. So that works here. It works in every view here. Super, super cool. And then there's accessibility, which I'm not an expert in looking into these features deeply, uh, but I did want to mention it. Um, one of the things that people have an issue with in things is that you can't change the text size, right? Like the text is going to be the size it is. There's nothing you can do to really change that. That's annoying to people because some of them physically like cannot read text that small. However, in Todoist, uh, you can just use, because it's based on web technologies, uh, you can go ahead and hit command plus to increase the text size. Uh, you can hit command minus to reduce it and all this kind of works just really about how you'd expect. And you can hit command zero to bring it back to normal size. Um, it's all kind of, it just works. Uh, in terms of other accessibility stuff, I can't get too deep into it, um, but from what I can see from people's comments online, it seems pretty good. There's some issues with screen readers if you want to like mark task complete, but in general, 
it seems pretty good with accessibility. And again, the ability to just kind of bump the text size up a little bit, I think is a really nice thing that people will appreciate who do have that issue with things. Okay, next up we have a really cool way to view your projects that isn't possible in things. So you can see right now I have basically all my tasks as normal tasks that I just need to check off throughout the day and they're or sorted into different projects and categories. What I can also do is create a Kanban style board. So I could do test, uh, we'll change this one to like mint green and then I can choose board from my view type. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and now you can see I can add a section. And so here I wanna do like uh, Q, we'll add a section. I uh, will make another one called in progress. Make another one called uh, done, right? So I have tasks that can be in queue, ready to be picked up, in progress, or done. And I can create a task, and this will be called um, thing one, right? Thing two, thing three. Cool. So now I have these things that I need to do, and then I can kind of keep track of them by just dragging this into in progress. Now it's in progress. Um, I can move it to done, um, and then I can check it off if I want. It'll disappear. I think I can actually change the view on here. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da -da, show completed task. So yeah, I can actually make those visible. So I could say, okay, thing, thing two is in there. Thing three, I can stack them to prioritize them. Okay, now it's done. Done and I can say it's done there and I can move it over um, as well. I don't know why it's not dragging. Apparently it doesn't drag once it's done, but that's a really nice option to have. You may not use it. I'm not currently using it. I actually use Notion like in this way to do my YouTube videos, um, but I theoretically could move it over to Todoist if I wanted. So this is a really nice option to have. Item number nine is Fantastical integration. So. I have my task manager up now, but I also live in my calendar, really. And one of the things I like about Fantastical, and full disclosure, I have worked for Fantastical. I've done some promo videos for them, but I actually genuinely do like the app. I like the service, so I, this is not being paid for by them in any way. Um, I sometimes like the ability to see my tasks on my calendar so that while I'm kind of living in my calendar, going from meeting to meeting throughout the day, I can go ahead and just see my tasks there as well and make sure I can see them coming up. So. If I hide Todoist and open Fantastical, I'm gonna blur out a lot of this because it's my work calendar and I really can't show you it. Um, but uh, you can see I have some regular calendar events here, here, and then down here are my tasks, right? So I need to do this thing at two o'clock. I need to do this at three, 3.45. So those are things that are on my Todoist list that I need to get done. You can kind of see 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 3.45, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 3.45. So those are all here. Uh, those are all things I need to get done and I have Fantastical setup. I don't have time to get into it, but you can basically set up a calendar set to sync to your Todoist account and show your Todoist tasks on your calendar when they're due. And you can even mark them complete from here. So that's really, really nice. So all that syncs back and forth um, super seamlessly, works really great. And I really like having this as an option. And the final thing that I wanted to show you today is the ability to add attachments to tasks. So I'm gonna add a new task here under work called uh, download wallpaper, right? Uh, and I'll just set it to do today. That's fine. So add the task. And now what I can do is I can click into it and it's a little weird. I have to go into comments and now I can drag in a file and that's going to upload. And I can say, this is the file. I actually don't have to write anything at all, but I will. So I have a comment there. This is the file. And now this is attached to the task. Uh, I'll be able to, I won't see it here or anything, but I can see there is a comment that I can look at. When I go to the comment, I can see the file and I can download it. So it's gonna download. It actually looks like it opens up the web <laughs> and has me uh, access it from there. It looks like they're host hosting their files on CloudFront. Um, but anyway, it is nice to be able to upload files to Todoist. I guess be careful with security and like what your company allows you to upload and everything. Um, but yeah, you're able to upload files to your tasks, attach them to them. I'm sure there's a size limit. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's nice to have the option to kind of append these little files to it. Um, so yeah, that's great. So yeah, those are 10 things I like about Todoist. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna stick with Todoist for the long haul, and I didn't even get into a lot of the stuff that's really cool about Todoist with 
uh, like collaboration if you're working with people. Uh, Todoist has the ability to do that in the first place, whereas Things doesn't. Um, there's a lot here that I didn't even touch on, but these are the things that are relevant to me. So hopefully it gave you an idea about what Todoist can do, what's interesting about it, and if it might be a good fit for you. This is not a sponsored video. Um, Cultured Code doesn't sponsor me either for things. So like nobody sponsors this channel <laughs> and they really can't pay me to say that I like these task managers. So uh, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.